How you doing guys? This is Matthias Sapva from Direct Dreadnought, your Dreadnought PS4 replay guy. Today we're going to continue our Dreadnought Advanced Tactics series with Part 2, Escort. So why bother with tactics? Why not just charge in and have fun? Well, for casual players who don't really care about fast-paced career progression, winning games, or not being a burden to their team, Tactics seems like too much work when the goal is just to have fun and watch pretty explosions. But for players who have taken a serious interest in Dreadnought, like to win and progress faster, or are preparing for competitive play, tactics are essential for more advanced gameplay. Some players prefer all offense, going it alone, or play fast attack ships that are the hunter, not the hunted. But this type of gameplay is actually a minority of the cross-sections of serious Dreadnought players. Oftentimes, as seen in some of my replays or replays against elite players, skill is not enough to claim victory for your team. There is always a better player out there, and the rest of your teammates might not be up to the challenge. Even if offense is your preferred style, I'm sure you've encountered situations where no matter how many kills you get or command ships you sink, the enemy team either kills off your teammates or your command ships faster. This sort of generic game tactic is called attrition warfare or zerging and is not as much fun or mentally enriching as using more advanced strategy in your gameplay. In our first tactics video, Counterattack, which I'll link at the end of this one, we explored how to use ships that are usually on offense, such as destroyers and corvettes, to play deadly and effective defense. By using ambush tactics and maneuvers, you can use speed, surprise, and subterfuge to your advantage to blunt an enemy's attack and put your team in an advantageous position that pressures the enemy to take the initiative and potentially make mistakes. Although this sort of strategy can work with many ships, it won't work effectively with all ship classes and is most suited for more nimble and hard-hitting craft. So what kind of tactics can we employ for dreadnoughts, tacticals, artillery, and slower destroyers? This is where the escort role comes in. We would probably associate escort with onslaught mode and the command ship, which is where this would most effectively be used, but escort tactics will also work very well in other game modes, especially Team Deathmatch, where protecting certain players, such as tactical cruisers, artillery cruisers, or a team leader, will give your team a definite edge over a less organized team. But there is more to escort than just parking next to a command ship or a tactical player. In fact, this sort of static gameplay is actually not very useful because if the action isn't near the target you are trying to protect, your firepower, modules, and hull won't be available where the combat is occurring. This means that your combat potential will be wasted and your teammates will be outnumbered if you are not there to lend your support. It can also lead to very stagnant gameplay if both teams take an overly defensive posture. So how can we pull off the role of escort without sitting around and not getting involved in the fight? Well, let's explore some basic escort concepts and formations. We'll start with two basic techniques, the bait and switch, and the offensive or defensive oblique. After that, we'll take a look at two more advanced concepts, the vanguard and the rear guard. When you recklessly charge in and don't pay attention to your teammate's needs, just trying to pad your kill count or prove you're the best, you're not really helping your team to win. When you are ambushing and counterattacking, you can be much more useful and helpful, but this sort of strategy requires another player or the command ship to be the bait. Even if your ambush or counterattack is successful, many times the bait is killed in the process, which may not lead to a tactical advantage. So what's the difference between counterattack and escort? In escort mode, you are essentially the bait. Your purpose is not to use the escort as a way to get kills on the enemy, but to be the first line of defense and prevent the enemy team from destroying their main target, if at all possible. However, if you are destroyed in the process, not only is it a loss for your team, but once you've been dispatched, 
the target you are trying to protect is now open to attack, which could result in a net loss of points for your side. Although a sturdy hull and good firepower can help in the role of escort, it's often not enough, and so you need to use tactics to give you the edge over your attackers. The first concept in escort, which is also the foundation for the escort role in general, is the bait and switch. Not to be confused with the bait and switch concept in the sales industry, bait and switch is the tactic of drawing the enemy's attention and firepower to yourself and then retreating behind nearby friendlies to avoid destruction and drawing enemy ships into your team's formation where they will be either outnumbered or in a bad position, unable to get the support of the rest of their team. After most players engage the enemy, they tend to either charge into close range or sit statically to trade blows. Another tendency of more novice players is to chase down wounded targets to get the final blow. With bait and switch, you are going to take advantage of these natural player urges and tendencies and be ready to fall back as soon as you make contact with the enemy. Some players consider this fleeing or cowardice, but you go into the encounter with the express purpose of being the bait of a trap and luring the enemy into a bad situation. To many players, trying to leave an engagement after it has already gone badly and don't have either the hull or the speed to escape, wind up being destroyed or chased down. With bait and switch, you want to gradually leave the engagement before it's too late and you're stuck in a bad spot. The idea is that once the enemy is engaged, you are pulling them in further and further into your team's fire while you are putting more distance between you and the rest of the enemy team. Bait and switch works extremely well in a small scale engagement like with a wingman or large scale engagements involving multiple or all the ships. The target you are trying to protect can also switch with you temporarily to act as the new bait just to have you switch back and shield your buddy's escape. All the while drawing the enemy closer and closer to the rest of your teammates and away from their teammates. I'm sure at some point you've tried to attack a command ship just to have an enemy tactical get in between you and your target and once you switch fire to the tactical it will often dive behind the enemy command ship to recover and repair it. Since you can't attack the tactical directly anymore you try to damage the command ship again just to have the annoying tactical emerge and harass you again. I'm sure you've come across this sort of situation involving dreadnoughts with tacticals and other ships. You go to attack a ship like a tactical, destroyer, or artillery just to have it hide behind a nearby dreadnought. Once you and the tanky dread start going at it, the ship you originally were attacking emerges repaired with its modules back online and the two ships either kill you or force you to retreat. If either of these scenarios has happened to you, congratulations, you've been the victim of a basic bait and switch. The keys to bait and switch is communication and timing. Bait and switch won't work if your teammate doesn't know what you're up to. Also, bait and switch will fail if you overextend and get destroyed by concentrated fire, or if you fail to retreat in time and wind up dead before the enemy switches targets. You don't want to advance too far into the enemy's lines and ideally want to start backing away as soon as you make contact with the enemy. You really want to start your retreat maneuver before you are in any actual danger. While faster ships can pull this tactic off at a moment's notice, they don't have the hull to absorb concentrated firepower. Slower ships with a lot of hull can withstand fire but need to start turning around early or they won't be able to back off and draw the enemy in. Now let's take a look at the other basic concept in escort tactics, the offensive and defensive oblique. An oblique is a slanted line defined as not parallel or perpendicular to a target. Oblique formations and battle lines have been used by great military commanders, navies, and armies since words have been in print. The oblique battle line takes advantage of the enemy's natural tendency to attack the closest target and to keep attacking a target that's already been engaged instead of switching to a new target. Besides taking advantage of these natural tendencies, 
The oblique also gives units in this formation room to maneuver as opposed to a parallel line which restricts movement from side to side or a perpendicular line that restricts movement backwards. In an offensive oblique, the line maintains a forward attack momentum, but as the lead unit takes damage, they have room to regroup, presenting more fresh units to the front line while repositioning to the rear parts of the formation to attack later, sort of like the teeth of a chainsaw. In a defensive oblique, the same effect is achieved, but the quicker elements of the enemy get separated from their slower teammates as they are drawn in. The main advantage of this formation is that the entire oblique line can fire at the enemy as it doesn't restrict fields of fire, yet enables the flexibility of the lead units to retreat and reform while the enemy cannot as they are all bunched together or in a straight line without blocking their own teammates. Since Dreadnought is a pseudo three-dimensional game, paying attention to vertical obliques and staggering your formation up and down can also give even more room and flexibility to this formation. One of the best examples on oblique line formation in naval warfare is the Battle of Tsushima in 1905 between the Russian and Japanese Imperial Navies a few years before World War I. In the battle, the Russian Imperial Navy, which had sailed from the Baltic Sea around Africa and India, approached Japan in three main lines, all led by dreadnoughts with cruisers and destroyers following behind. The Japanese Navy, commanded by Admiral Togo Heihashiro in the lead dreadnought, formed into a single line and approached the Russians in an offensive oblique. The Russian dreadnoughts opened fire on the lead Japanese dreadnoughts, but because they were in an oblique, all the Japanese ships could fire on the lead Russian ships while the Russian ships further back didn't have a clear line of fire. The Japanese oblique formation gave plenty of room for the lead Japanese ships to maneuver and as they took some damage, the lead Japanese ships made a sharp turn, avoiding more damage and exposing fresh ships in the Japanese oblique line. The Japanese ships followed their lead ships in a saw-like motion and the entire line was able to cross in front of the Russian line also known as crossing the T in naval warfare. The entire Japanese line hammered and sunk the Russian dreadnoughts while the other Russian ships didn't have a good line of fire and were now attacking the undamaged ships at the tail end of Admiral Togo's oblique line. After the damage had been done, the Japanese retired and sailed home, preserving their dreadnoughts and denying the Russians a chance to inflict serious damage. Later that night, Japanese destroyers made torpedo attacks to finish off most of the Russian cruisers and destroyers as they tried to regroup or escape. The Battle of Tsushima goes down as one of the two most important pre-carrier dreadnought battles in history, along with the legendary Battle of Jutland. Admiral Togo's stunning victory, due in part to his choice in formation, would drastically change the balance of power in Asia, and would also have historic effects on Russia during World War I in 1914 and later for Japan and the United States in 1942. Okay, enough history. Let's look at how the escort tactics of the oblique formation and bait and switch can help defend a command ship by forming a vanguard and rear guard around the command ship. In this scenario, we are going to assume two ships on our team are either corvettes off on their own trying to attack the command ship or are players that just don't care about tactics and are playing their own game. The vanguard is the leading part of an advancing formation. It will be the line of ships staying in front of the command ship, looking out for trouble and advancing towards the enemy. In this scenario, it will have three ships, two dreadnoughts and an Akula destroyer. The rear guard, or part of the formation that defends against attacks from the rear, will be two ships, an Oberon Tactical and an Akula Artillery Cruiser. Staying nearby the rear guard is a friendly, experienced Oberon destroyer looking to counterattack the enemy and pad its kill count instead of going off on its own. The enemy team is a typical Zerg who all want a piece of that juicy 300-point command ship 
and they abandon their own command ship, which is actually pretty common in Dreadnought, unfortunately. They leave behind an enemy tactical that wants to farm repair points on their command ship. The Vanguard is an offensive oblique with the Akula Destroyer in front on the far side, an Akula Dread in the center, and the slower Jupiter Jutland anchoring the rear on the side closest to the enemy. In the rear, the artillery cruiser is closest to the command ship with a nice field of fire, and the tactical is slightly behind, in range of the command ship acting as bait. Meanwhile, the friendly Vindicta is hiding and lurking. Most of the enemy force heads straight towards our team's vanguard, while some enemy fast attack ships circle around to the rear. The Akula destroyer spots and marks the enemies heading towards the vanguard and immediately starts turning around as it starts to take fire, unloading all of its missiles in the process. The Akula Dread begins to turn and take the lead spot as the Akula destroyer circles around behind the Jutland, shooting at whatever ships might try to chase it. The Jutland now takes the center and focuses fire on any ships chasing the destroyer. As the Akula Dread starts to take damage, it follows the destroyer and begins to back away as the Jutland takes its place in the front of the oblique line and the Akula Destroyer takes center after getting some repairs while the artillery cruiser provides some long range support. This forms that chainsaw action I mentioned before. Suddenly though, the enemy corvettes and fast destroyer attack the rear. The friendly tack drops mines and pods, marks the targets, and warns its teammates. As it takes fire, it retreats behind the command ship. The Akula artillery turns around and starts shooting and becomes the new bait. The friendly Vinny then springs its trap and clobbers the enemy corvettes as the Akula artillery takes fire. It can also retreat and the friendly tactical can move up and become the new bait and distract the enemies while the Vindicta cleans up. It should be noted that at any time, the rear ship in the vanguard closest to the command ship can drop behind and help the rear line, or vice versa, the friendly artillery tactical or Vindicta can leave the rear line if there is no more danger and assist the Vanguard units that are falling back from intense enemy fire. All the while, the two ships from our team that were off on their own have probably overpowered the enemy tactical and may have even killed the enemy command ship while ours is safe. While no strategy or formation is perfect, using bait and switch or oblique line formations to protect vital ships can give you a serious edge on opponents that are recklessly attacking a specific ship or objective. By mindfully drawing the enemy in and using communication and teamwork to enable friendly ships to withdraw or hide without blocking your team's line of fire, while simultaneously sharing the enemy damage across many friendly ships can give you serious staying power in any engagement. Mastering the timing of knowing when to block enemies and protect your teammates, thus becoming the distraction or bait, and knowing when to switch out and let other friendlies take the hits for you while you recover is the key to making the escort strategy work for you. This concludes part two on advanced dreadnought tactics on escort. If you miss part one on the tactics of counterattack, follow the link or check out my YouTube channel, Direct Dreadnought. Remember that most games in Dreadnought won't be as rigid or predictable as the examples I give in my replays or these tactics videos. But if you keep advanced tactics in mind and incorporate them into your overall strategy, and use communication and teamwork, you'll have a huge advantage on enemy teams that lack coordination or basic strategy. Well, that's it for me for now, and I'll see you soon in Sinley Bay.